Uh, again, a good afternoon to all the delegates for today. Today is the second day of the webinar series on Dental Photography. Uh, this webinar is sponsored by Dental Photography School and I am Dr. Mayur Dawda. Uh, I have been lecturing at Dental Photography School since the past two years. I am currently a uh, practicing dentist in Bombay. Uh, my clinic's name is Home Dental Clinic. Currently, I am the president, active president at Dental Photography School. Our website is www. Telephotographyschool.in. Currently, I am also the active director at the Dental Education on the website www.thedentaleducation.com. Uh, I should be thankful to God that I am also an artist and I do a lot of, a lot of uh, liquid droplet photography. Uh, specifically, liquid droplet photography comes into the category of high speed and uh, micro photography. So, you can check out my artwork of uh, Photographs of liquid droplets uh, on www.liquidcanvas.in. Currently, I'm the CEO of a company called Yellow Webinars and the chairman of the forthcoming World Dental Photography League. I've had my share of exhibitions, my my share of art exhibitions, and probably the biggest one of them was Kala Goda, which happened last year in 2014, and I've had exhibitions at corporates as well. One of the biggest corporates that I've worked with is Deloitte. Apart from uh, conducting art exhibitions, I've also done art encouraging lectures. I do art encouraging lectures in schools and colleges across India. Uh, you can see the pictures are from various schools and colleges like RAIT, Dr. D.Y. Patil College and so on and so forth. My last art exhibition was in October last year where I had done my art exhibition with the art in clay and I got an opportunity to meet a lot of celebrities at that time. Apart from these art exhibitions, I've done a lot of small art exhibitions as well. The national television of our country uh, has been really uh, grateful and it gave me an opportunity to give a television interview on uh, my art artwork which is liquid object photography and I was interviewed twice and with Doordarshan. My forthcoming art exhibition is at Jahangir Art Gallery. So I wholeheartedly welcome all of you to my art exhibition at Jahangir Art Gallery, Bombay, uh, which starts on December 23rd and will be on for seven days. Uh, one of the biggest uh, events of my life was uh, getting featured on the cover shot of Better Photography Magazine. Uh, Better Photography Magazine is probably uh, the best photography magazine in India and they had interviewed me probably in July last year. Uh, I had a four-page interview on Better Photography Magazine July issue and I was also featuring on the cover shot. Uh, on the screen you can see a couple of images of my liquid droplet photography artwork. <clears throat> Apart from this artwork I do a lot of other uh, photography like wildlife photography which currently I am not pursuing because of ethical reasons. I believe that wildlife photography in India is probably not going in the right direction. I've had my images published in Lonely Planet. Uh, I'm sure you guys must be knowing about Lonely Planet. Uh, it's probably the largest travel magazine worldwide as of today. I've published several articles uh, on uh, dental magazines as well. I like can see in front of your screen. I've published articles for Dentcare Dental Magazine the dental experts and also write articles for IDA Times. Apart from these, I've had several publications on national newspapers like DNA. I have been doing citizen journalism since the past two years. Apart from that, I've won several awards, especially with Sanctuary Asia and a, a lot of other competitions. I thoroughly enjoy herpetology photography, that means photographing snakes. Uh, coming on to Dental Photography School, uh, the Dental Photography School was launched uh, two years back and since then I've been the president of Dental Photography School Touchwood. Things have been going really bright and I've got an opportunity to interact with a lot of dentists uh, in India. I have done a Dental Photography Encouragement Lectures at Faridabad, Pune, Surat, IDA and various other places. Apart from conducting uh, dental photography encouragement lectures. I do a lot of workshops which are three-day workshops 
in which we have live hands-on demonstration like you can see on the left hand side image uh, wherein we teach the dentist how to do the right kind of dental photography we make them use the right kind of equipment so that they can get a feel of how ideal dental photography is to take place somewhere in the last year that is 2014 i got an opportunity to be a part of portuguese dental associations dental art photography exhibition so this is one of the very unique things that has been going on abroad and one of my images was selected over there so probably this was the image that uh, i had sent to portuguese dental associations dental art photography uh, exhibition as you can see uh, this is probably uh, the initial stages of an eruption of the central incisor you can clearly see the perikamata and the mandula was intact so i really request all the dentists who are attending today to follow the passion of dental photography wholeheartedly so that you get recognized worldwide because of the kind of work that you are doing uh, this uh, this slide is about uh, the alumni of the students who have attended the dental photography workshop which was a 3 day uh, complete hands on workshop uh, conducted at bombay Uh, this is what they had to say about the dental photography workshop. Uh, one thing I would like to say over here is that this photography workshop is about enjoying dental photography completely. It's not a typical workshop uh, which is related to the clinical topics. It's a full-fledged photography workshop, and we not only teach about extraoral and intraoral photography, but uh, we do speak a lot about other kinds of photography like macro photography, wildlife photography, and stuff like that. So it's kind of a fun-filled three-day workshop, which uh, you should probably look forward to attend. Uh, the dates which have been put up for this year, the forthcoming workshops are April, August, and December. We do take our delegates outside uh, typically, so that, uh, like you can see in front of you, the April and the December workshops are holiday event workshops. so we take the delegates to a resort uh, probably near a wildlife place so that the delegates can practice macro photography even in nature so this is a very fun field activity uh, the curriculum for the 3 day hands on dental photography workshop is in front of you uh, it starts right from the introduction to dental photography we teach about the camera we teach about the camera settings what are the ideal settings we teach every delegate how to calibrate their cameras and their flashes for extraoral photography intraoral photography and right through how to document their uh, files and folders correctly and in short about managing the images and editing the images a very important announcement for today uh, the esteemed attendees of today's webinar get a value added discount for the forthcoming course uh, which is on social media marketing in dentistry The speaker for this course is Dr. Vikram Venkateswaran. He is a great teacher, is a marketing guru and a dentist. So this course is actually priced at rupees 2900 but only for the delegates who are attending today the course has the course fee has been slashed to 1500 only. So if you wish to attend or register for this course do let us know. Uh, we'll be really happy to have you in this session. So moving on to our webinar for today. Today's webinar is choosing the right, helping every dentist to choose the right equipment for dental photography. In this, we'll be speaking about camera selection, the lenses, and the flash systems. Uh, for the people who had attended yesterday, uh, we've spoken quite a bit about camera selection already. So today we'll be focusing more on the flash and the lenses. So let's move on to today's webinar. Uh, essentially, what I've developed uh, in uh, dental photography for the dentist to understand uh, about how to go about buying dental photography equipment is called the reverse concept. Uh, it is a concept that will ensure that you make choices about uh, purchasing the right kind of equipment for dental photography. It is a concept with a vision. Uh, currently, in front of you, there is a Japanese proverb which says. vision without action is a dead dream action without vision is a nightmare this holds so true even when you are buying the dental photography equipment just suppose if you bought a dental photography equipment equipment without vision and uh, 
then you probably don't know how to use that kind of equipment. So it does turn out to be a nightmare if you do not buy the right kind of equipment. Or probably if you wish that you wanted a particular kind of image uh, that you had seen somebody else take and you probably went ahead and bought some kind of equipment and that kind of equipment is probably not helping you take such pictures that you had seen. So uh, when you probably don't buy the right kind of equipment, there are high chances that uh, what you purchase does end up like a nightmare for you. So what is the vision in tether photography? Uh, taking amazing photographs, documenting your cases very well, yes, very much. It, it has to be a part of your vision. That vision has to also build up your practice and lastly, you have to mature as a visionary dentist who is well known for his expertise. So this is the kind of vision that we are looking for even in dental photography. Uh, current goal for today is to make brilliant dental photographs and how do we do that? Uh, firstly, we need to have a basic knowledge of the kind of equipment which is available in the market, extremely important and then learning the right kind of dental photography or probably learning how to use that equipment so that you can get the images that you love to take, that you've seen others taking and you want to take those images by yourself. So, knowledge and the right kind of equipment is actually the key to success. If you have the right kind of equipment, if you have had the training and the practice, you can definitely do international quality or the best quality dental photography at your own clinic. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, this slide might be a little difficult for the beginners to uh, understand. Uh, usually I get this question very frequently on my emails and people keep on asking me what is the right kind of camera, which is the best camera to buy for dental photography. Now uh, let me make one thing very clear. Uh, it does not depending, it, it's not dependent upon your camera if you can take good images or not. Essentially, uh, dental photography is about flash photography. So, the key to taking great pictures, great dental photography pictures actually depends upon if you have the right kind of flash with you. So, the secret to good dental photography, what is it? The secret to good dental photography is having the best kind of flash system available and of course the inclination and the passion to use it effectively. Now before I proceed with today's webinar, I would like to ask my delegates, have you been doing dental photography in your practice? Uh, please type in your answers so that I can you know, route my lecture accordingly. Dr. Darshita, Dr. Dinesh, Dr. Atul. You can just type in your answers, Dr. Sneha, that will be great. Dr. Dinesh Madan is saying yes, uh, that's really good, Dr. Dinesh. May I know where you're from, Dr. Dinesh? Gurgaon, great. Uh, great to have you uh, for today's webinar, Haryana. I was glad I conducted uh, one, uh, uh, you know, one day workshop at one college in Haryana. I'm sure you must be knowing about uh, Sudha Rastogi College, that's in Faridabad. So that was one place where I really enjoyed thoroughly interacting with the postgraduate students. In fact, the session was actually for the postgraduate postgraduate students and to encourage them to take out their photography in their postgraduate curriculum. Right. So, what is the kind of flash system that you're using uh, at this point of time, Dr. Dinesh? Do you have a flash system, a dedicated flash system? Are you using pop-up flash or inbuilt flash? Great. They're using inbuilt flash. So we'll be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of all the kinds of flash system which are available in the market as of today. So uh, which is the ideal kind of flash which is available and uh, which is probably the best kind of flash to be used for real photography? Uh, I'm sure you must be having this question. Uh, and we are here to solve this question for you today. Ideally, I personally believe that uh, when a dentist wants to buy a flash, he thinks about three important things. One is, of course, how expensive or inexpensive that flash is. Second thing that the dentist thinks about if it's easy to use and if it's consistent, if it will give the same kind of results each and every time that is fired and 
probably the most important thing that the dentist wants as of today is that the flash should be able to use for all kinds of purposes. It has to be useful for external photography, it has to be useful for internal photography, it has to be important for tabletop photography, so on and so forth. In fact, the dentist even wants that the flash should be used for portraits and for family parties and functions. So probably these are the requirements of an ideal flash system that a dentist is looking for. Let's see if uh, the flash systems which are currently available do satisfy this or not. Now the types of flashes which are available as of today, one which Dr. Dinesh is using, which is the built-in flash, it's also called as the pop-up flash. Uh, probably the most popular of all the flash systems as of today for dental photography amongst the dentists is the ring flash, although I strongly recommend that you don't use this flash or probably don't buy this flash. We'll come to this uh, when we are talking about ring flash in detail uh, in the following slides. So probably the most popular kind of flash that's available in the market uh, or pro the, probably the most popular flash system as of today amongst the dentists is the ring flash. I strongly suggest that we do not buy a ring flash. We'll see the reasons why not to buy it. And uh, probably the least known flash system amongst the dentists today is the dual point flash system. Right, Dr. Ab Abhijit Mohanty is saying that I use SBR200. That's great to hear. Uh, but I would like to know if you have the commander as well, Dr. RPG. Are you using the commander? Uh, it's called the R1C1 system. Um, I would like to know if you're using the R1C1 system or if you've been using SBR200 separately. It's wireless, yes sir. I know that uh, it's wireless, but uh, uh, I, uh, do you use it with your pop-up flash? I mean, do you control the flashes with your pop-up flash? Or do you have a commander in place for it? Because this is one thing that is really important. It, wow. Of course, this uh, what Dr. Abhi is speaking about this in the advanced levels of dental photography. But do let me know. Okay. Okay. Dr. Abhi is saying that the pop-up is on but does not fire. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Dr. Dinesh Madan is saying that I do have the similar wireless flash but I have not used it. Fine. Uh, I don't know why you've not been using that wireless flash system. Honestly speaking, it's one of the best flash systems that's available in the market as of today, Dr. Dinesh. So I request you to please use it. If you have any issues or some basic uh, questions about it, you can please throw it up so that we can take it up for today's session. <clears throat> so let's move on to the webinar for today. Thank you so much for your answers, Dr. Abhijit and Dr. Dinesh. Uh, looking for more questions from Dr. Darshita and Dr. Atul. Uh, do throw up your questions so that we can answer your questions and this session is a little bit more interactive and fun. Right. Uh, Dr. Abhijit has another question. I'm not sure that I have uh, that I have is a ring flash. Okay. Uh, probably you can take a picture of that and you can send it to us so that you can, you know, we can help you out with the kind of flash that you have purchased already. Yeah, we'll surely help you out with that. Uh, we'll surely help you out with that. Uh, usually the ring flashes are not wireless. I mean, I have not used a ring flash which is wireless. So I'd actually like to see what you're using. If you can just give me the company name or the specification of your flash and Google it and find it and I'll definitely help you with that. So moving on to the pop-up flash, I think uh, Dr. Dinesh, you are using the pop-up flash as of today. Uh, one of the main biggest advantages of this pop-up flash is that it's inbuilt in the camera. So you don't have to purchase a separate flash for it. Uh, you just press a specific button, the flash pops up, and then you can use the flash at your advantage uh, with uh, the kind of power that you're looking at. Mind you, the power of the flash can be controlled really well. And I uh, always suggest or request my students to use even the pop-up flash uh, in the manual setting, as in you can actually regulate the amount of power that the pop-up flash is throwing onto the subject. And this is really easy to do in the Canon cameras, a little bit tricky in the Nikon cameras. <clears throat> uh, so a pop-up flash is extremely useful. It is inexpensive just because you don't have to pay for it separately. Right, Dr. Darshita is also using uh, uh, a pop-up flash, an inbuilt flash. Great to know that Dr. Darshita. So uh, we've discussed the advantage of the pop-up flash. Now what is the disadvantage of the pop-up flash? Honestly speaking, I don't see any more advantages of pop-up flash. Uh, 
other advantage is that it probably has is is it's common those advantages are common to the ring flashes and the dual power flash so not included in that uh, in the slide as of now so let's speak about the disadvantage uh, the disadvantage is that it's uh, less powerful of course and this is very obvious when you take portrait pictures or external photography uh, the direction of light is up front is the second major disadvantage mind you that uh, whenever the light is up front we miss out on the shadows uh, which give depth to the tea so uh, if you can understand during afternoon times uh, uh, whenever a person is going out and if other person is looking at that person uh, uh, that we say that the depth is lost because the light is coming from all the places so we can't basically appreciate the shapes and uh, the figures in that case so that is why we say that the morning sunrise period is a very good period that's because the light is coming sideways so whenever the light is coming from the side is going to give good dimensions to our object no matter what that object is but in case of pop up flash and the ring flash which is mounted onto the lens the light is up front and it goes directly and hits onto the tea so we miss out on the shadows which are cast in the interdental spaces which are very important to understand what kind of anatomy or what kind of morphology the tooth has or the or the jaws have so we miss out on that we miss out on the shape we miss out on the depth feeling so that illusion which is important for us to understand is completely lost whenever the light source is up front so this is a very basic problem uh, with the pop up flashes that is less powerful and the direction of light is up front the other disadvantage of the light being up front is that we cannot take aesthetic shots for our study and we is really difficult to understand or record the shades during the shade matching images ultimately what happens because of the upfront light is the images turn out to be flat and uninteresting there are harsh reflections from various weird places like the incisal edge uh, where definitely we don't want a reflection to happen uh, so there's a major disadvantage of an upfront flash so even a ring flash is an upfront flash so the disadvantages of pop up and ring flash more or less remain the same also many times what happens is the, the position of the pop up flash is on top of your camera so whenever you are taking pictures of your jaw upper jaw and the lower jaw what happens is that there is a sharp shadow of the upper lip on to the teeth which is very very uh, a bad to get documented on to the uh, pictures that we want to record so let's just see an example of what a pop up flash works like uh, so this i think i think you can see the image in front of you at this point of time right so this image has been taken by a pop up flash uh let us just study this image and uh, can you give me some disadvantages or some problems that you can see in the images in front of you uh with respect to what i discussed in the pre previous slide dr abhiji dr darshita dr dinesh dr atul can you point out some flaws with respect to this image or these images yes the shadow the reflection uh dr darshita can you elaborate what which shadow you are exactly talking about and the reflection of light of vg yes the reflection is very harsh as you can see dr dinesh is also saying that the shadows are harsh the shadow on the top exactly 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 i think the upper teeth yes dr darshita uh, dr abhijit has put it pin point you can uh, appreciate that there is a shadow on the top that is because your light was up front whenever you are using your pop up flash what happens is that the light is hitting the incisors and a harsh shadow is being cast on the top now unfortunately this looks very pathetic according to me and the shadow should not be there at any cost so uh, automatically because of the shadow what happens is that i can't concentrate on the teeth itself uh somehow probably because i'm used to seeing shadows uh because i'm a big critic of my own work uh the first thing that i look out for is the shadows and what is under exposed can you all also appreciate that uh, the lower molars are completely in darkness 
can you appreciate that i can't uh, actually see any kind of detail uh, from my lower canine backwards i really can't i really can't yes so this is also a major disadvantage that's because our light is up front and it's not properly falling at all the places where we wanted to fall so do we have control would you say uh, my delegates my dear delegates would you say that this flash is uh, flexible with respect to uh, how we can position the flash or it's or you say that or you support my statement that the flash is just stuck on your camera and your capacity to do a lot has been come down what would you say about this i personally believe that uh, your scope is very restricted when you come to a pop up flash very restricted the second one yes definitely so thank you for all your answers as you can see uh, you can't do a lot of experimentation with a pop up flash and there are harsh shadows the light is too strong on the central incisors and it radically reduces as we go towards the posteriors the reflections are very harsh and uh, uh, you can say uh, all kinds of stupid shadows coming at all the places which are also important for us to document so uh pop up flash can be used during the initial stages of your practice or probably you can say that uh, when you're just learning how to use a dslr please go ahead with just using the pop up flash so that you can get used to or feel how flashes are functioning try to use the flash even in the manual mode uh when i'm saying try to use the flash in, in the manual mode what i want to stress upon is that you should be able to control the flash power and please kindly do not put it on automatic why it's because there is a scope for you even in the pop up flash to actually regulate the power i request you to please regulate the power manually you can either do it keep it on zero which is the mid level or you can put it in minus 2 or you can get it to plus 2 so this kind of feature is available in your dslr beat any kind of dslr yes of course uh, uh, i'm not sure if you guys know that uh, uh, pop up flashes are not available in extremely expensive professional dslrs for instance a uh, full frame camera like uh, 5d mark 2 it does not have a pop up flash so if you have a pop up flash in your dslr definitely you have the features like you can regulate the flash power i request you to use it effectively now uh, there is a way to bypass the kind of harsh shadows Uh, that you are seeing on your screen even with a pop up flash can you give me one small suggestion as to how i can reduce the shadows one or two if you can share that with me i would definitely help you out with reducing the kind of shadows that you are getting even with a pop up flash i am not saying that pop up flashes are completely useless i do believe that pop up flashes are good they are very good but provided you should know how to use them correctly honestly speaking i believe that If you are planning to if you are planning to buy a ring flash, please don't buy it because pop up flashes are as good as a ring flash. Are as good as a ring flash. Can you give me one suggestion uh, to reduce the kind of shadows that we have got in the image in front of us? Check retraction if possible. Extremely good point, Doctor Dinesh. Extremely good. Any other suggestions, Doctor Atul? Uh, maybe the change of angle. Exactly, Doctor Abhijit. Uh, one very very a uh, good thing that dr abhijit has stated that uh during the process of making images when we make an image we have to concentrate on which place we are getting the shadow according to what dr abhijit has suggested i also suggest that if you get a shadow probably on the tongue what you can do is you can use a contraster a contraster is nothing but a black colored background you can keep it in the patient's mouth you can auto clear it later on So in this case, what happens is that the shadow gets merged with the black background. So although there is a shadow, nobody can appreciate it. Just one way of bypassing the shadows. The second thing is what Dr. Abhijit has mentioned. You can change the angle and see by trial and error method if you can reduce the shadows. Any other suggestion? Because there is one very good suggestion that's been missing. Uh, one very good suggestion is there. In that case, we can get the light softer. This is one clue that I want to put out to the audience. How do I make my flash soft so that my shadows are less harsh? Anyone? 
you all must have gone to a photo studio they have something for that using any filter switch off to switch off the chair light uh, dr darshita i would not suggest that you switch off the chair light because it does help us uh, focus on the teeth nicely but the suggestion is that you keep do not put it directly on the teeth or the jaws you can probably uh, put the light on the chin so that a little bit of light spills onto the teeth and that helps us uh, focus our images or compose our images better so yeah very good suggestion by dr darshita but uh, using a filter for getting soft images is probably not the right thing to do have you guys heard of something called a soft box or a diffuser ever uh, this is one thing that is really going to help you reduce the harsh shadows have you heard of something called a soft box or a diffuser or bouncers have you heard of something like that i'm not too sure if uh, i'm getting any answers right so a soft box is nothing but something which reduces the uh, harshness of the flashlight which is on our camera be it pop up flash or be drink flash or be dual point flash uh, it is nothing but an attachment it's basically a white colored cloth or it's a white colored tissue paper or it's a white colored plastic so what we do with a soft uh, uh, we can make a diy soft box like that we can make a diy soft box like that what i basically do even when i'm using a pop up flash like dr dinesh uh, the what i basically do is i take a white color tissue paper and uh, i see to it that is double or at least triple or quadruple i fold it like that and then i cover my pop up flash with the white color tissue paper essentially this is because i have not purchased the separate diffuser for that so you can make your diy soft box or a diffuser like this all you have to do as you can see on the screen the pop up flash you just cover it sorry uh, the pop up flash you just cover it with a white color tissue paper that's it so what's going to happen is in this case uh, the light which is coming out of out of the flash it becomes less harsh you just put a white color tissue paper over here can you appreciate my spotlight uh, all the pop up flash you just cover the pop up flash with a white color tissue paper and you can secure it with rubber bands so this will act as a diffuser so whenever you are clicking your pictures with uh, something like a diffuser which is a diy white tissue paper that's it your images will be coming out much more soft i'm sure you'll be able to appreciate more details in your images and your shadows will become less harsh so that was one way of reducing the kind of shadows that we get on pop up flash systems right uh, what is black color contraster dr abhijit i'm coming on to that we do have images of contraster which are available in the market uh, no worries about that at all oops my slide has completely uh yeah can you guys see my slide it's our ring flash uh we coming on to ring flash at this point of time right i believe that you all can see the ring flash slide and you are with me at this point of time let, let us discuss what a ring flash is uh ring flash essentially looks something like this you can see on the right side of your screen a uh, ring flash is basically a flashlight which is attached to the lens of your camera right and the lens that we are going to use in dental photography is of course a macro lens now what happens what are the contents of a ring flash one is it has a controller or it's also called as the commander now this commander is seated on the hot shoe of your dslr camera you can see that this part is actually not a part of your camera this is a controller of your ring flash so this commander is a part of the ring flash which is attached on to the lens with the help of a wire okay and uh, this is basically a ring flash by a third party i don't think it's canon or nikon it's some other brand now each and every ring flash has three components one is that it's got a tube on the left side of a left arc probably you can say and one tube on the right arc so you can fire them individually 
or you can fire them together as well. Another component that it has is a steady source of light, which you can use for focusing better on your images. It is basically an added advantage so that in case of darkness, you can still see or use these continuous sources of light and focus effectively. So this is how a ring flash looks like. Uh, now let us look about uh, the advantages of a ring flash. As compared to a power flash, a ring flash is definitely much more reliable and it's much more powerful. The other added advantage of it compared to a pop-up flash is that, like I said, it's got uh, individual elements, one on the left and one on the right. You can fire these individual elements as per your requirements. So this is a good flexible option that a ring flash provides over a pop-up flash. Mind you, I personally do not feel that the ring flash are way too superior compared to a pop-up. I believe that pop-up is much more better and ring flash is only for orthodontics. Uh, Dr. Abhijit is saying, I have sent a photo and make of the flash on your mobile phone number. I want to confirm if I have one. Okay, uh, let me check on that. Let me check on that. Just give me a moment. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you have a dual point flash system, sir. Really good. Really good. So what Dr. Abhijit has sent me is that he has a Nikon system and the flashes that he has is SBR200. The ring that you have sent me is actually the adapter ring. It is just used for attaching the ring, uh, attaching the flashes onto the lens. So congratulations Dr. Abhijit. What you have is actually a dual point flash system. It's called a twin flash system also. Uh, but let's just be with the ring flash system at this point of time. Uh, this is a ring flash system again. Uh, ring flash system has a lot of disadvantages as well. Uh, we've already finished with discussing about the advantages. Now let's go on to the disadvantage. Now the disadvantage of ring flash is that this element, the, the right element and this element which is the left element, these elements are fixed. You can't do anything with them. You can't move it. Uh, you can't twist it. You can't turn it. Attaching another diffuser is very difficult. Attaching a bouncer is also extremely difficult. So these are a couple of practical disadvantages of a ring flash and I really do not suggest anyone buying a ring flash. That's because pop-up is equally good. Now what happens if these elements are fixed? Uh, can anyone tell me what happens is if these elements are fixed? It's uh, one of the major disadvantages is that you can't do a lot of experimentation with this ring flash. The kind of consistency is always the same. The, the images that uh, will turn up will always look the same no matter what kind of experimentation you want to do with respect to your flash. Now this is very important for orthodontics. That's because they want a consistency or standardization with respect to the images. But to a dentist who is looking for uh, different kind of documentations like documenting aesthetic work, document, documenting good anterior composite work, uh, adhesive dentistry, uh, you want to understand the translucency of the images, the translucency of the natural teeth and the translucency what you have given on their adhesive work. So these kind of details are not possible to be uh, recorded by a ring flash. Why? Because the ring flash is also an upfront flash and uh, recording translucencies is a big problem with the ring flashes. Probably because you can't attach diffusers or bouncers onto that. And another thing is that these flashes uh, don't move. The ring flash is always attached to a lens. You can't twist it. You can't turn it like you can do with a dual point flash system. I'm sorry. Yeah. So they are expensive. Is one major disadvantage. It is almost comparable to a dual point flash system. And they are very heavy. Yes, but there's not a problem as such because uh, when you get used to using ring flashes, uh, probably if you use it for a month, you'll not find that is really heavy, you just need to practice using a ring flash. And uh, the other disadvantage is that it's upfront and it gives unnatural lighting. Again, uh, what happens in these kind of flashes which are upfront is that uh, can you appreciate in the image of the upper and the lower jaws is that practically there are no kind of shadows uh, in between the teeth. In the interdental spaces also, there, there are supposed to be a couple of shadows which give some kind of dimension to the teeth which are completely missing. Why? Because our flashes are upfront. So whenever the flash is upfront, we miss out on 
the shadows which are cast interdentally, the shadows which are cast you near know, the gingival circles, so on and so forth. So it is afraid it gives unnatural lighting and the shots that we take with the ring flash are boringly monotonous. I personally feel that they are very monotonous. I experiment more with a pop-up flash compared to a ring flash. So I believe that it's more exciting to work with a pop-up flash, which is the inbuilt flash of your camera. So we have discussed the advantages and the disadvantages of uh, the ring flash at this point of time. Uh, so uh, another thing I want to mention over here is that compared to a dual point flash system, the ring flash system is a little less powerful. So what happens in this case is that although the light is reaching till the end, my depth of field is compromised. That's because if I want a good exposure, I have to compromise on the aperture value. So in this case, my depth of field is a little shallow compared to the dual point flash system. Now let's understand what a dual point flash system. To begin with, let us see how it looks first. I believe Dr. Abhijit Mohanty, this is kind of similar to the flash that you own. Uh, for the other people who could not see what Dr. Abhijit has sent me on WhatsApp, this was probably the kind of image that he sent me, but he just sent me the uh, flash system uh, on the camera. This is a typical dual point flash system which was sent by, uh, which which has been produced by Canon, I'm sorry. Uh, the kind of uh, dual point system is manufactured only by two companies, one is Canon and one is Nikon. So the people who have purchased other brand cameras have bad news that they cannot purchase dual point flash system of other companies. So there are only two companies who manufacture it. Sony does manufacture, but they are, uh, but they are, uh, sorry, their dual point flash system is extremely painful to use in dental photography because uh, they have very long arms. So uh, there is a circle over here around the lens, plus it has arms on before the flash is attached. So it becomes painstakingly useless for me and I feel that it's not useful for dental photography, although it might be very useful for other kind of macro shots. Dr. Abhijit is saying, in fact, I asked for ring flash in Canada. They gave me this one, saying that it's ring flash. I think it's a lucky buy then. Thankfully, uh, because you're in Canada, they gave you something which was much more useful and that they do understand that ring flash is outdated at this point of time. So you're really lucky, Dr. Mohanty. And I'm sure that you must be using it to the best of its potential. So let's move on to uh, what is called a dual point flash system or a twin flash system. Let's discuss the advantages. One, it's extremely versatile uh, in the sense that uh, if you can appreciate in the picture, if you can appreciate my pointer, uh, this flash is by Canon and uh, I have this flash and personally I love this flash. I can move my flash in three axes. I can move it behind forwards. I can move it up and down around the circumference of this ring. If you can appreciate my mouse, mouse pointer, I can move it around the circumference of the ring also. I can move it, twist it behind also, forward also. And then I can turn this head on the left and right. So these kind of movements are not possible with any kind of pop-up flash or any kind of ring flash. This is possible only with a dual point flash system uh, by Canon or Nikon. I have not used Sony flash system because it has got very large arms and I feel that's not useful for dental photography. So it is extremely versatile and these flashes are extremely important if you are doing aesthetic work. Uh, they are extremely accurate and there is a huge permutation and combination which is possible with the kind of movements that these flashes or flash lights enable a dentist uh, to perform. You can actually twist and turn the complete flash system as and when you want. In fact, you can also turn it around and put the flash on you. So it's as flexible as that. Another major thing that I want to talk about is that these flashes are extremely, extremely powerful as compared to a ring flash and also a bubble flash. So that's a very good uh, thing about a dual point flash system that they are very powerful. The controller is very, very accurate and they provide for a high degree of standardization. Uh, just like uh, just like a ring flash that I showed in the previous slide, Canon dual point flash has a source of continuous light. Canon 
dual point flash system have a source of continuous light? I'm sure I think uh, Dr. Abhijit, SBR200 does not have this continuous source of light. Correct me if I'm mistaken, but SBR200, which is the system by Nikon, does not have this continuous source of light. And I personally believe that this continuous source of light is important in two things. One, even if your uh, chair light is not on, you can put this continuous source of light on and still focus effectively on your on the patient's teeth. Yes, it does not happen. And uh, the other advantage is that it is useful for recording good quality videos also for uh, uh, dental uh, photography or dental videography, you can say. So these continuous sources of light are extremely handy and uh, very useful. That is why I feel that Canon system is very, very good compared to a Nikon system. We're coming on to that slide now. So, uh, and it can be used, the last advantage of course is that it can be used for inanimate photography also. When I'm talking about inanimate, I mean it can be used for tabletop photography. Uh, in tabletop photography in dentistry, you can say taking pictures of the cast, taking pictures of the prosthesis and stuff like that. But what are the disadvantages of this? Uh, the disadvantage of a dual point flash system is that they are expensive and they are heavy. These are the only two disadvantages that I could think of. But trust me, they are not expensive because they are li a lifetime investment. Probably they are as expensive as the kind of mobile phone they are using. In fact, it is half the cost of iPhone 5S. Right? So they are a lifetime investment and they will always be with you. They are very faithful. So don't think of it as being expensive. Think of it as a good investment for yourself. They are heavy, yes, but they are equally heavy compared to a ring flash. So there's no way that you should be thinking about buying a ring flash. If you're thinking about buying a ring flash, might as well buy a dual point flash by paying 10,000 more or rupees. Uh, it's a much, much better buy compared to a dual point flash system. Right. Uh, Dr. Abhijit is saying that uh, he does have a continuous source of light. I think this is what you want to say, Dr. Abhijit. Uh, you do have a continuous source of light in your SBR200. Please confirm that for me because I'm looking forward to uh, know that. Yes. Okay, great. So, Dr. Abhijit also has a continuous source of light. So, I have, I'll have to correct my knowledge about that. So, that's a good advantage of dual point flash systems as well. So, this is a typical picture taken by a dual point flash system. Uh, if you are taking full arch images, uh, whenever you are taking full arch images, uh, it's a little difficult. Uh, it's a little difficult to, you know, uh, even in dual point flash systems to regulate the kind of uh, reflections that you're getting, but definitely you can get better reflections. Can you guys appreciate where my mouse pointer is that the line angle is illuminated over here. The line angle is illuminated and exactly after that, there is a shadow. And this shadow helps me understand the kind of depth which is possible or the kind of depth which is actually present in that image. Or it actually gives me an idea as to uh, the dimensions of this lateral incisor. Can you appreciate this which was not possible to appreciate with a ring flash system? I'll give you around a couple of 10 seconds, I think, to appreciate that these uh, line angles are illuminated. Can you appreciate in this image? I think this is a better image compared to the earlier one. It's very, very pleasing to have reflections on your line angles because they look very, very natural. Whenever a person is smiling, if you, during the daylight also, if you look at their teeth, the line angles are always illuminated. In fact, whenever the line angles are illuminated, it gives a sense of three dimension. And the interdental spaces are in shadow. So whenever there is a combination of a good shadow and a reflection at a good place, we always understand what it seems like in three dimensions. We, are, we, we get an exact idea as to what would be the dimensions of that particular tooth or a set of teeth. So I'm, I'm hopeful that you can appreciate that with a dual point flash system, we can appreciate the dimensions of our teeth much better as compared to uh, a ring flash or a purple flash. Another major thing that you can appreciate in this image is what? Can anybody point out? It's a very important thing for aesthetic dentistry work, for adhesive dentistry. 
and uh, to understand this is very simple you can just point it out for me i'd be really grateful to you uh, anyone exactly dr darshita exactly dr dinesh yes thank you very much for that uh, this is very very important in adhesive dentistry and in good cosmetic work you can appreciate translucency much much better in a dual point flash system as compared to as compared to a pop up flash or a, a ring flash that's because in the uh, earlier flashes that i said those flashes are up front the flashes don't come from the sides like they come from a dual point flash system whenever we use a dual point flash system the lights are coming at 45 degrees they always illuminate wherever we want them to illuminate uh, specifically if we want we can illuminate the line angles with experience and we can ensure that the incisor edge reproduces all the colors which are actually present in the patient's teeth so a very good replication of the translucency can be recorded only by a dual point flash system that is why dual point flash systems are the future and it is the in thing it will probably be a gold standard for dental photography for at least the next century is my prediction another important thing uh, when it comes to using a dual point flash effectively is uh, if you can appreciate my mouse pointer can you see the reflections where i have kept them purposely over here and over here they are not on the line angles i purposely kept it so that i can reproduce something which is there on the tooth can you point out what i wanted to show because i wanted these reflections come out like that can you point out what i wanted to show I'll give you 5 seconds if you can think about something which is important yes 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 exactly exactly all of you have got it really up and this is not possible to be appreciated appreciated with a ring flash it is possible very easily with a dual point flash all of you have already given correct answers dr abhijit is saying you can see the lines dr darshita is saying surface irregularities dr abhijit is saying pits dr kamlesh is saying uh, imbrication lines of perikamata uh can i collaborate all of them and say that my surface texture is very well reproduced in this image can i say that i wanted to show what it feels like to show the surface texture to my lab and i believe that i did good justice when i used the dual point flash system in this case usually all these surface textures are missed in an up, in an upfront source of light uh you know what happens in an upfront source of light is that you can't expect to get shadows can you appreciate my mouse pointer see there is a reflection over here and immediately after that there is a shadow again a reflection again shadow reflection shadow reflection shadow again on the left hand side incisor central incisor of the patient you can appreciate that there is reflection and then shadow reflection shadow reflection shadow this is possible only if you can actually logically think that the lights are coming from the side just imagine if the lights would be coming up front would we get such shadows on the teeth it's practically not possible in fact the shadows would have been burnt out completely we would have not got any shadows if the light was up front so in order to get good surface texture reproduced in our images we have to ensure that the light comes kind of tangentially on the surface of our central incisors can this happen you tell me if this can happen Uh, with a ring flash or a pop up flash i'm waiting for an answer can we put our lights tangentially to the surface of our central incisors with a ring flash or a pop up flash the answer is expected from you never not with a ring flash exactly this is very important to understand that's because you have to understand the capacity of the dual point flash before buying it before just going in for a blind purchase uh, you have to understand what you want out of your dental photography honestly speaking if you are an orthodontist at this point of time it will not matter to you because 
it's not important for the author artist to record the surface textures. That's because probably they don't do a lot of aesthetic work. If you are an author artist and if you're still doing aesthetic work, I should be really proud of you. Uh, but if if you are doing aesthetic work and if you expect that you will get such kind of images with a pop-up flash and a ring flash, you're completely mistaken. If you want such images, if you want to do good work, if you want to understand the surface texture correctly, if you want to understand the translucency, put it up on a big screen, both for your patient and for yourself, the kind of flash that you require is most definitely a dual bulb flash. I'm very sure that I'm, I was convincing or probably I was able to help you in understanding that the dual bulb flash systems are the best flash systems which are currently available in the market as of today. So do you all agree with the statement that is in front of your screen at this point of time? Do you think that it's a clear winner or you think that there are drawbacks? Dr. Darshita, what is your opinion on that? Dr. Atul, what would you like to suggest? Any suggestions? This is worth a time. Yes, this was a time. Obviously, this was a time. And honestly speaking, trust me on this, there is not much of a price difference between a ring flash and a, and a dual bulb flash system. Yeah, Dr. Dinesh, I missed out on your question. What is the approx cost of Nikon dual point flash system? I did not answer it because I am coming to that. I am coming to that. Dr. Atul Shirayale is saying, yes, they are the best. Dr. Darshita, dual point flash wins hands down. Dr. Kamlesh is saying, okay, much better option. Yes, much better option. Uh, right. So, uh, now uh, you're probably getting a picture about the reverse concept. Uh, if you remember that during the start of, during the beginning of the webinar, I spoke about something called a reverse concept. A reverse concept is something that I said will help you understand or will help you buy the right kind of photography equipment so that you don't go wrong in your purchases, right? So, I hope that you understood the importance of a dual point flash system. It is completely up to you if you want to go ahead using your pop-up flash or if you want to go ahead and buy a ring flash or if you want to go ahead buying a dual point flash. But trust me on this, there is only one clear winner and that is a dual point flash system. So once we have decided upon buying a dual point flash system, out of the three options that we are supposed to purchase for dental photography, which is the camera, the lens and the flash, we have already reached on to a decision about buying a flash. And now why we call it a reverse concept is because, see my the first question that the delegates or the attendees ask me usually is what is the camera that I'm supposed to buy? I tell them that I don't think about buying a camera first. The thing that you've got to think about first is buying a flash. So they are in a state of shock. Why? You will understand gradually. Uh, I hope you understood that only two companies manufacture this dual point flash system. The third company, Sony, is not in this competition because of the difficult design they have put it up for their macro flash system. So which are the two companies which manufacture these dual point flash systems? There's no doubt about it, there are only two companies that one is Canon and one is Nikon. Sony does not stand a chance. Sony does not stand a chance. So, I'd like to put a question to you. Would you buy a camera if you're planning to purchase a ring flash or a dual point flash for yourself? Of course, now you know that there are only two companies manufacturing it. Unfortunately, you can use one company's flash for the other company. So, if you have not yet purchased a camera, it gives a clear indication for you to understand that probably you should go ahead with a Canon system or a Nikon system because probably two years down the line you will purchase a dual point flash system. So this flash system agreement or you can say that if you understood the flash system there are greater chances that you will buy the relevant camera equipment correctly. Am I making some sense out of this statement? that? your choice of flash is going to dictate the kind of camera equipment that you're going to purchase. And this is the sense of a reverse concept because you don't decide on what camera you want to buy first. You have to have a vision like my first slide. 
you have to have a vision of foresight of what kind of pictures you want to take what kind of dentistry you want to practice and then decide upon the kind of flash you want to purchase if you are an orthodontist it definitely is okay if you have a ring flash you can go ahead with a ring flash for the rest of your life but if you want to practice aesthetic dentistry you have to have a dual point flash so there are only two companies canon and nikon so of course your camera has to be canon or nikon it can't be a sony camera it can't be a samsung camera it can't be a sigma camera it can't be a tamron camera so now your choice of cameras has also narrowed down that is because you have made a wise choice of buying the right kind of flash now uh, moving on to dr dinesh's question uh, on the screen right now there is nikon flash system which is also called as r1c1 system and there is a canon flash system which is called as mt24ex okay so the price is also in front of you let us compare these flashes and understand which one stands a clear winner so let's just go on to that approximate value of a nikon flash system which is r1c1 or sbr200 is 40000 rupees approximate cost of canon system is 49000 rupees is it expensive probably you must be gasping at this point of time thinking that it is very expensive but trust me even the ring flash is equally expensive it probably just 7000 cheap so, so there's no point in buying a ring flash system at all but is 49000 or 40000 really worth the value yes it is that's because once you buy a flash it's going to be with you for the rest of your life that's because you're not going to change it and it's one kind of standardization for the images that you take for your dental photography it will always be with you it's a lifetime investment it is like buying a chair you don't keep on replacing it often it is not like buying a mobile phone although you replace your mobile phones every 3 years you still buy a mobile phone which is of 20000 rupees so at the end of 3 years or you can say at the end of 9 years you spend more than your flash am i right so definitely don't think of this as a very expensive purchase i believe that it is a lifetime investment and when it's a lifetime investment i think rupees 40000 or rupees 49000 it is very very good buy it is a very very good buy now let's move on to the next point nikon r1c1 flash system or you can say the sbr200 flash system works on special batteries and these batteries per cost of battery is rupees 1700 i believe i uh, correct me if i'm wrong dr abhijit uh, i believe the other person who have this who has the system is dr dinesh madan one battery is for 1700 rupees for the r1c1 system However, for the Canon system, uh, the batteries that we use for the Canon system is a double A size battery. That's a typical Duracell battery, right? So just imagine that over a period of years, your Nikon flash system is going to be turning out to be very expensive because as soon as the battery is over, you are almost investing two two thousand rupees for one flash, and you have two flashes, so you are actually investing four thousand rupees every time or every month. so is nikon more expensive or canon more expensive the question is on to the delegates what do you think will be more expensive the nikon system or the canon system please help me with your answers i'll give you 5 seconds yes so absolutely nikon is more expensive uh dr kamlesh is saying that canon is more expensive honestly speaking i do not understand that that's because over a period of 9 months you will understand or uh, probably regret why you bought a nikon system don't have an option uh dr dinesh is saying don't have an option have a nikon camera so have to go with the nikon flash system uh i'm sorry dr dinesh if i would have conducted this lecture a couple of years back i would have saved you out of this uh dr kamlesh is saying i mean canon is a better option yes canon is a much better option dr abhijit is saying touch wood my battery for sbi 200 has not exhausted since i bought it in 2009 that kind of probably speaks as to how frequent you are infrequent in fact you are using your flash system dr abhijit so uh i think it's very clear that uh, uh nikon flash system is going to be very very expensive over a long term now you will ask me probably the next point is a rechargeable option available in the nikon system yes sir it is available dr abhijit 
Dr. Dinesh, don't get disappointed. Uh, rechargeable options are available, but the bad news is that they are impossible to find in India. On the other hand, the Canon system, which has a double A battery, it ha obviously we have rechargeable double A batteries. So uh, the problem with Nikon is that one, the batteries are not easy to find, and even if you happen to find the rechargeable option, it's going to cost you a bomb. Now, I believe that uh, the fourth point is one of the most important points when it comes to choosing the company. Uh, in case of an emergency, suppose if there is an emergency, you have lost out on your battery and you have no other option. In case of an emergency and you have a dead battery, can you use a double A battery, Dr. Dinesh? Dr. Abhijit, can you use a double A battery for a SBR? Can you answer my question? Suppose if you are clicking pictures and your battery has exhausted, can you use a double A battery? No. Abhijit, doctor, you, there are no options. You have to use that specific battery that Nikon has probably trapped you with. There is no other option. You can't use a double A battery along with the SBR 200 system. Dr. Kamlesh has asked me what do you mean by ETTL and TTL function. Uh, an advanced level question, but I'll come to that at the end of the conversation if you don't mind. Uh, but continuing with, in case of an emergency or a dead battery, Dr. Abhijit and Dr. Dinesh says bad news. Uh, in case of Nikon, you don't have any other option, but you'll have to switch on your pop-up flash and your documentation is going to suffer if your battery is getting exhausted. But the Canon users rejoice. You can also use a Duracell battery and the Duracell battery is going to work really well and it also lasts very long. Moving on with the next uh, point, although the price difference of 9,000 rupees between Nikon and Canon, you might feel that Nikon is economic, but trust me, in nine months or a year, you will understand that you've paid much more than a Canon person. Uh, another uh, major advantage or disadvantage probably if you think, I personally believe that a wireless system is unreliable is a wireless system is unreliable as compared to a wire system. I would always prefer my landline or I would always depend upon my landline more in my house for the phone compared to my mobile phone. Because even in my mobile phone, there is network issue. But this does this ever happen with a wired system? No. That's because wired systems are much more reliable. The chances of accidents are less. So I would personally prefer that wired systems are much more better, they are much more accurate, and they fire always. Now coming on to Dr. Kamlesh's question, what do you mean by ETTL or TTL? Uh, the full form of TTL is basically through the lens. It is a metering system. It is a way by which the camera has to understand the exposure settings. There is something called an exposure meter in your camera, in each and every camera. It is like a weighing scale. There are, uh, there are numbers on it like minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1 and plus 2. Just like your, uh, you can say x-axis and the y-axis. This is just the x-axis. So this is the basic x-axis and this is the meter. The TTL function of every camera is basically governed by a sensor. And this sensor tells the camera if your image is going to be underexposed, properly exposed or overexposed. Whenever a system is wireless, you can trust me for this that the system is going to be inaccurate and Nikon systems are quite inaccurate whenever I've used it, I've, under, I've found out that sometimes the flash fires, sometimes the flash does not fire. It is probably because it is wireless and sometimes your commander is not sending the actual signal so that your uh, uh, flashes can fire. Does this happen with the wire system of Canon? No, never. It is wired. The commander will, the signal of the commander will always reach the flash and the flash will fire consistently like an AK-47 machine gun. There is no doubt about that. There is no second thoughts about that. That Canon is much more uh, easy to use, it is much more accurate, and it is very much repeatable. Now, when we do dental photography, already the patient has retracted the cheeks. The patient are probably not finding it a little more comfortable. Just imagine. Uh, if one flash has fired in your Nikon system, the other flash did not fire. This is uh, very uh, bad for the patient because you will have to keep on taking a lot of pictures until both the flashes are firing. Does this happen with Canon? No, because they are wired and both the flashes 
are controlled by the controller itself. There are no buttons on the flashlight. As against, there are too many buttons on the Nikon system. The SBR200 flashes have, I think, three buttons, and all three buttons have three functions. So if you go ahead with the permutations and combinations of the kinds of groups and stuff like that, you possibly land up with more than 27 or 54 combinations of your flashlights, which is really confusing to the dentist at this point of time. Already the dual point flash system is more confusing. And when you put an SBR200 in front of the dentist, which has three, three buttons, four, four buttons, and so many combinations, the dentist gets more confused. I find it difficult to explain it to the dentist how to use it effectively. I think it's an over purchase or over features. These features are not required in dental photography. So many buttons are not required in dental photography. In dental photography, you want just simple settings and something that you will be able to execute on a daily basis. Right. Uh, the another thing uh, that's a major disadvantage if you have so many buttons and so many groups is that it's not easy to remember all the settings that you had for your pre op pictures. That is why standardization is compromised. On the other hand, in Canon, there are no such group functions, no such permutations and combinations. Everything is controlled by the controller which is put up on your camera and that is why there is a high amount of satisfaction with respect to the standardization with which you can achieve with the dual point plus system of Canon. Moving on to Nikon again, wireless so it can be kept anywhere in the room. Yes, there is one good advantage that Nikon has to offer that your flashes are wireless so probably even for an extra oral photography they are very very good. However, the, uh, the Canon system is a wired system, right? So the flashes will always be attached to the camera only and you can't place it separately. So they are a little less effective for extra oral photography. However, if you want to place your SBR, yes, you can also hold it in your hands, Dr. Abhiji. Uh, but even Canon can be held in your hands, but that's a little cumbersome. You need to have assistance for that. Or probably, Dr. Abhiji, you can buy light stands. Light stands and a flash adapter for your flashlight. Uh, but you have to see to it that the SBR200 flashes, they do not uh, support uh, hot shoot. Their stands are a little different. So you'll have to ensure to tell your camera dealer that you are cold shoot and not a hot shoot. So you can place these SBR200 on the light stands. And uh, uh, the light stands are of various companies. You can go in for Sonia. It's a good company. Go ahead with buying light stands of Sonia company. Just buy a good a uh, light stand, it is a light stand, L-I-T-E, light stand, or L-I-G-S-T, light stand. Let me just answer that on chat window. Yeah, it's a light stand, and uh, you can purchase it from any photography equipment shop, and you can use this. They are basically the same stands that a professional photographer is using to put the studio lights. They are the same stand. So. If you want to put your SBR200 flash, you have to buy an adapter separately. Please ensure that you buy an adapter, otherwise you will not be able to fix your SBR200 onto the light stand as well. Right? So this is one advantage that Nikon has to offer and Canon does not have. But can it be overcome? Yes. The advantages of these kind of sophisticated light system is that it acts as a master and you can purchase more flashlights. Uh, you can purchase most speed lights. You can purchase even third party speed lights. When I say third party, I mean different company speed lights and make them slaves. So these slaves again can be put up on the stands or they can be held handheld and they'll also fire along with the Canon flashlight. So this problem is honestly easily, very easily overcome and I don't think is a major disadvantage because even when I use my flashlights on the lens itself, I can do extra extra oral photography very effectively. So moving back uh, onto the Nikon system, I personally believe that the after stage service is horrible and questionable. However, the Canon people are very professional. The service is way, way, way better in India. Moving on to Nikon again, can attach unlimited slaves. The, the advantage remains the same even in the Canon system. Moving on to Nikon on the left hand side, does not have a continuous light source. Dr. Abhijit, uh, I am sorry to include this point, but I will definitely correct that even SBR200 has a continuous light source. I will ensure that I delete this point and it will not be there for my next session. Dr. Abhijit, thank you very much for pointing this out to me. 
Right. Uh, one this one advantage that Nikon system offers is that the ring on the lens allows an addition of up to eight SBR 200 flashes. However, the ring on Canon cannot attach more flashes. So this is one advantage that Nikon has. But again, uh, this is an over feature for any dentist because already with two flashes, the camera and the flash system assembly becomes way too heavy. A dentist does not require more than two flashes, so it's an over feature. If you want to do any kind of photo, any other kind of photography, like glamour photography or fashion photography, probably you might think about buying other SBR 200 flashes. But definitely, it's an old feature. Trust me on this. Even one SBR 200 flash, I think, is for 10,000 rupees. So I would not suggest buying another one. But if you really want to buy, you can go ahead with that. The major disadvantage of the Nikon system it has is that it's got too many buttons on top of the flash. Too many buttons, just too complicated to understand and just not for the dentist I believe. Uh, another issue with this is that if you have a bouncer or if you have a softbox that you want to attach onto the SBR system or even if you want to just tie a rubber band onto, sorry, try it, uh, if you want to put a DIY softbox, like if you want to tie a tissue paper, and if you want to tie it with a rubber band, these buttons get pressed very easily. So this is a major concern that uh, the Nikon company has to take into consideration. The buttons get easily pressed and because of this, the entire setting changes. And uh, another disadvantage is that if you put a bouncer on a softbox, uh, because it is a wireless system and it works on infrared signals, sometimes if you put a bouncer in such a way that if you block the sensor, which takes the sensors uh, which takes the messages from the controller or the commander uh, if the bouncer is blocking that sensor your flash will not fire your flash will not fire now a bouncer is also uh, something that diffuses the light it is basically indirect lighting so in this case if i'm using a bouncer uh, what happens is that i will not put the flash directly onto the teeth i will put it exactly opposite to that and i'll place a hard plastic which is completely opaque which is white or you can also attach a white colored cardboard it's basically a reflector it reflects the light all to the teeth again so bouncer is nothing but a reflector it, it reflects the light of the flash and you it throws it back all to the teeth but this is a way in which you can solve the issue of direct lighting of the teeth we don't want direct lighting of the teeth because it gives a lot of harsh shadows so uh, when you put a bouncer on the Nikon system, a lot of buttons are pressed, the sensor gets covered and the flash does not fire, the settings get changed. Canon system on the other hand has no such issues. So, as you can see, Canon system has very little disadvantage compared to a Nikon system. That is why I personally believe that Canon systems are way superior, they are very easy to use, they are user friendly. And of course, I do not want to scare my dentist delegates that uh, Nikon system has too many buttons, so you've got to be careful about that. Even if one setting changes, the whole standardization goes for a toss. So I would preferably not go back to my Nikon system, which I had earlier. I would stick to my Canon system because it's extremely easy to use. But the choice is yours. If you have already purchased a Nikon system like Dr. Dinesh has, please, please, please go ahead with the r one c one system by Nikon. And it's a must buy if you have a Nikon system. But if you have not yet purchased a camera, I believe that going ahead with Canon is a very, very smart choice compared to a Nikon system. About the kind of lens that we need for direct photography, I think we are running out of time and I'll have to hurry up on this. I'm very sure that all of you know that we need a macro lens for direct photography. Uh, why we need a macro lens is essentially that we can govern the magnification ratios. We understand what the magnification requirement is and we set the lens accordingly. Uh, always keep in mind that we always use uh, the lenses in manual focusing. We set the magnification ratio first and then we take pictures. Uh, probably the topic about magnification ratio is a bit too large to be discussed in this webinar. I'll be uh, probably putting it up in another webinar if you want that I speak for the magnification ratios. So uh, we have to purchase a macro lens and the options which are available for us is 85mm macro lens, 90mm macro lens, 100mm macro lens, 
or a 105 mm macro lens. Whichever is available, you can purchase. There is no problem with it. So, you can conclude that any macro lens in the range of 85 mm to 105 mm makes a good buy for digital photography. Now, uh, I hope that you know what these numbers mean. The question is out to the audience. Do you know what is 85, 90, 100 and 105? Do you know what it's called? The answer is expected from a telegraph. Yes, uh, Dr. Abhijit is saying distance of the lens. I believe that Dr. Abhijit wants to say that is the distance of the object to the lens. I'm not too sure if this is what you meant. Uh, Dr. Dinesh is saying no, uh, he's not aware of it. Dr. Darshita is saying she's not aware of what these numbers mean. Okay, so uh, just in a nutshell, because even this topic is very last we discussed for this webinar, uh, 85 mm, 90 mm, 100 mm and 105 mm. Or you can say, can I also say 8.5 centimeters, 9 centimeters, 10 centimeters, and 10.5 centimeters. Can I say that? Can I say that? It's just a distance, right? But can I use the term centimeters? Yes, yes. Logically speaking, yes. And technically speaking, no. That is the answer to my question. So, yes, logically speaking, 85 mm is exactly equal to 8.5 centimeters. 90 mm is 9 centimeters. 10, 100 mm is 10 centimeters. 105 mm is 10.5 centimeters. Yes, I can use these terms, but I don't because my camera dealers will not understand what I'm trying to say. So what I'm trying to say about these numbers is that it is called the focal length. It is the focal length of the lens. Focal length governs how much of the object is visible onto the sensor, right? So uh, basically it's the focal length of the lens. If in terms of technicality, it means the size of the lens in length. For instance, if it's an 85 mm lens, the size of that lens will be 8.5 centimeters. If it is a 90 mm lens, the size of that lens in length will be 90 uh, mm or 9 centimeters. If it is 10.5 mm, it will mean that the lens dimension is 10.5 centimeters. It is the length of that lens. But that lens has to be focusing at infinity at that point of time. So this is the definition of focal length in short. I just uh, explained it a little more logically. Okay, so uh, this is basically the focal length. You can offer any kind of focal length ranging from 85 mm to 105 mm. Any lens is fine, whatever fits your budget is good. So, uh, the question now comes is that can you, okay, now that you've decided that probably you'll purchase a Canon system, so you'll buy a Canon camera, so can you purchase a Nikon lens for a Canon camera? Is my question to the audience. Can you purchase Nikon lens for camera, camera Canon camera? Looking for an answer? Dr. Darshita, can you answer that? Can I purchase a Nikon lens for a Canon camera? Yes, you can't. Right. Yes, so there are a couple of limitations and I personally believe that uh, honestly speaking you can, uh, there is an adopter which comes like uh, Dr. Kamlesh correctly pointed out, you can actually uh, attach a Nikon lens to a Canon camera or if you have a Nikon camera you can attach a Canon lens to it, but honestly you lose out on a lot of features of the lens if you buy an adopter and if you try to do that. The other thing is that any additional element between the camera and the lens, your focal length changes. So I would never suggest that you buy an adopter. But you can't buy a Nikon lens for a Canon camera, technically speaking. Yes, but you can buy a third party lens. You can buy a Sigma lens for a Nikon. You can buy a Sigma lens for Canon. You can buy Tamron lens for uh, Canon. You can buy Tamron lens for Nikon. You can buy Tokina for Nikon, Tokina for Canon. And uh, n number of permutations and combinations. 
why buy a third party lens it depends upon your budget if you are comfortable buying the same company lens please buy that same company lens because there are a lot of features which get uh, which are usable with the same company if you are loyal to the same company a lot of features are active but if you buy a third party lens you miss out on a lot of features but it but if you really ask me does it matter in digital photography no that's because in digital photography i use my lens in manual focusing most of the features that my lens is offering to me i don't use at all in fact i have purchased an l series analog lens which was on canon and i believe that i should not have made a a heavy investment i would have i should have gone for a non l series lens by canon itself the price difference is huge but the quality difference is less but my question to the audience is there are some lenses like 18105 lens 75300 lens okay so 18105 this is one lens 75300 this is the second lens 18105 has 85 90 100 and 105 all these values in it also 75300 lens has values 85 90 100 105 but should i buy these lenses for digital photography that is my question this is one question that students frequently ask me dental professionals frequently ask me they ask me if they can use 18105 lens for macro photography or 75300 lens for macro photography can they, can these lenses be used for digital photography ideally Yes, Dr. Abhijit is saying that 18105 means that it is a zoom lens. Dr. Dinesh is saying ideally not. Dr. Abhijit is saying, and it will not focus. It will not focus. Yes. Okay. So the basic reason why these lenses, which are also called zoom lenses, can't be used for dental photography is because uh, these are not macro lenses. They don't have macro feature in them. Now, essentially. uh the beauty of a macro lens is that it allows you to come very very close to the subject this is the beauty of a macro lens and only a macro lens can do this only a macro lens will allow that you come very close to the subject and you can take the pictures coming very close to the subject for instance even if i want to take an external photograph i can come close to the patient and take an external photograph if i want to take pictures of a single central incisor i can do that with a macro lens only imagine if you have 75 300 lens If I make you stand 10 feet away from my patient and I say, take up, take the picture of the central incisor, it's it's really stupid to do that. Honestly speaking, I don't even have a clinic which is as big as that. So you can't expect to be standing at a very long distance, zooming in onto the central incisor and taking a picture of that. You can't. And the second thing is that these zoom lenses. they don't have a feature of giving you the magnification ratio dimensions which is possible only and only with a macro lens and the last reason why you don't buy it is that one is to one magnification is never possible with a zoom lens or any other lens one is to one magnification is only possible with a macro lens it's not possible with other kinds of lenses what is one is to one again a topic which can be discussed in elaboration i will not include that in today's webinar probably we can conduct another webinar for this same all of you are most welcome to email me and tell me or suggest me for future webinars if you want that i should discuss a particular topic i will be more than happy to conduct a webinar for the same i request the dental education i speak to the president and then we can keep webinars for the same okay so just by saying that a person has 18105 lens or 7300 lens uh or uh, you can't use them for dental photography and hence never buy lenses and other equipment from non reliable sources who are sitting there to dupe you they will say that even this lens has a uh, 100 mm in it so please don't go ahead and buy these kind of zoom lenses a zoom lens cost is uh, basically depend up, depending upon the company Uh, I believe that uh, the Canon non-L series lenses for approximately thirty-six thousand, and uh, Nikon eighty-five uh, mm or ninety mm or hundred mm is approximately same cost, approximately thirty-two thousand. But if you go ahead, if with a third-party lens like Sigma, Tamron, Tokina, you can get a good buy for twenty-five thousand as well. So 
it is not actually necessary that you buy the lens of the same company but please ensure to tell your camera dealer which camera you have otherwise they will give you a macro lens which is of some uh, probably they'll give you a macro lens for Nikon if you have a Canon camera so you can buy Sigma, Tamron, Tokina whatever fits your budget no problem with that always buy lenses from reliable sources in fact always buy any camera I could build from reliable sources only two good online sources to buy are Photobed which is a company based in uh, UK I believe and Dental Photography School which is my company we are, we are going to start an e-platform very soon for the dentists so that the people who trust Dental Photography School uh, they can buy equipment from our uh, Dental Photography School itself so this is typically a macro lens uh, right in front of you at this point of time this is an L series lens by Canon it is the lens that I own. It is the premium quality lens. Honestly, I feel that it's an overbuy. You need not buy this lens. A non-L series by Canon is also good. The only difference between the non-L and this lens, uh, I personally believe, is the stabilization which I never use. My stabilization is always off. Obviously, the glass used in a premium lens is very, very good. So if you have that kind of money to purchase this lens, most welcome to buy it. I have bought this lens because I do uh, other kinds of macro photography. So I need crystal clear, extremely sharp images that I can make prints of, of the size of billboards. So that's why I've gone ahead and purchased a premium lens. Considering an ideal situation as our benchmark, uh, since we have rounded up on a Canon class system, I would prefer always to buy a Canon lens that's because a couple of features uh, of a lens like camera tokina they are not available to work with our camera. So I would obviously prefer Canon lens. Another major drawback of a third party lens like Tamron, Tokina, Sigma is that they are externally focusing lenses. In the sense, if you move your camera lens for focusing, the lens elements come out. They elongate and they go back inside when you are trying to focus. Now these lenses are called external focusing lenses. Imagine that you have attached a ring flash system or a dual point flash system in an external focusing lens. If you keep on rotating it, it's a little cumbersome to use because it might touch the cap, it might touch the patient when you are taking one to one images, or the patient might feel scared that the flash system the, the flash system is coming close to them or it's going away from them. So in this cases, even a standardization goes for a toss. The amount of light entering with the jaws will Keep on changing if you are moving your lens, if you are trying to focus your lens. Does this happen with Canon? Uh, no, because Canon lenses are internally focusing lens. Even if you keep on rotating the dial to focus, uh, the length of the lens remains the same, irrespective of what kind of settings it is. So I would always prefer the same company lens like Canon, if I have Canon, I'll buy Canon lens and if I have Nikon, I'll buy a Nikon lens. Dr. Abhijit is saying in later webinars you can discuss aperture, ISO, shutter speed, exposure, compensation, white balance, etc. Uh, Dr. Abhijit, just a request, please give me only one topic at a time so that I can implement it very easily. Just give me one topic, uh, uh, let me know exactly what you want to know about it and I can keep a webinar on that uh, as early as tomorrow. In fact, I can keep a webinar tomorrow, the day after, whenever you want it. You can even give me a date. We can keep a webinar on that day. Not an issue at all. Good depth of field. Great, great topic. In fact, this probably you can say an advanced topic. So it will not be a little useful for the beginners, but definitely. Uh, let's keep a webinar for the depth of field, Dr. Abhijit. Do let me know the date and time. We'll definitely schedule a webinar for depth of field for you in the forthcoming webinars. Do email me. Moving back to our webinar for today. So uh, we've discussed about the lenses. So what we have discussed so far is that we are going ahead with the Canon class system. So if you want to buy the same Canon lens, there are two options. Either you have an L series lens or you have a non L series lens. Now an L series lens is very very expensive a normal series is probably a good buy for any dentist across the globe so you can say that you have narrowed down to the flash and now the lens the only thing that is remaining now 
is a camera if you don't have one and we have already discussed about the camera selection in our last webinar so I'll not be talking too much in detail about it we have already discussed yesterday that the camera's main classification is based on its sensor size megapixel is a marketing gimmick please do not go for it do not fall for if a camera has greater megapixel it's a better camera please do not do that always depend or ask about the sensor size with respect to the sensor size there is a full frame camera APS-H sensor, APS-C sensor and APS-C sensor for Canon so if you have purchased a Canon flash or you are planning to purchase a Canon flash system Canon lens you will have to buy a Canon camera for that you have you don't have an option of APS-C sensor general category so you have only three choices based on your budget you can go in for any camera of your choice I personally prefer that an APS-C sensor Canon small sensor size is a very very good buy for any kind of dentist because we honestly speaking do not need an APS-H sensor APS-H sensor is a big sensor definitely we do not want a full frame sensor because we are not going to make huge billboards of our dental photography and uh, I think it's very heavy to use and it's an over buy for dental photography coming on to uh, almost the ending of the webinar uh, always remember that the end result of an image is more dependent upon your light use rather than your camera. Always and always insist on a good class system, then later on a good lens and last and the least important is your, cam is your camera. Always remember flash is the king, lens is the queen and camera is the jack. Other handy instruments, I think somebody did ask me about what a contrastor is. The image on your left hand side is about contrastors. They are nothing but black colored backgrounds. Honestly speaking, even if you don't have contrastors, you can make your own like I do. I don't have contrastors, uh, so many contrastors. I think they are very expensive and overbuy. So this uh, semi-lunar shaped contrastor is for occlusion. I believe they are the most useless contrastors. Uh, the tongue shaped projections out of it are for uh, buccal, buccal contrastors, they are called buccal contrastors uh, and the spoon shaped contrastors are actually contrastors for your anterior aesthetic shots right so they are very good for adhesive dentistry oh I'm sorry now the mirrors are very very important always insist on good quality mirrors uh, obviously the best quality mirrors are uh, rhodium coated titanium coated or chromium coated all these mirrors are extremely expensive always insist on front coated mirrors now typically every Indian dentist must have heard of a company called Capri and most of us might be using Capri mirrors they are the worst choice mirrors available in the market never use them because they are not front surface coated mirrors they are back surface coated mirrors so if they are back surface coated mirrors you will always end up with two reflections one is the actual reflection and one is the ghost reflection. The actual reflection comes from the back surface and the ghost reflection comes from the front glass. So never insist on, uh, uh, never buy Capri mirrors because I never insist on back coated mirrors. Always insist on good mirrors. I personally feel that a very good buy is stainless steel mirrors. They are highly polished mirrors and uh, they are available in set format. Never buy Capri mirrors, Dr. Abhishek. That is what I said. Don't buy glass mirrors of Capri. Capri has stainless steel mirrors. I'm not sure if they have stainless steel mirrors. If, you, if they have stainless steel mirrors, please buy them. Honestly speaking, I personally believe that stainless steel mirrors are the best buy, Dr. Abhishek, because uh, you don't have to worry about if it falls down and it breaks. That is one advantage. You can least worry about autoclaving because stainless steel mirrors won't get spoiled because of water clearing procedures and lastly they are highly polished and uh, they are extremely extremely effective for dental photography any kind of mirrors you have to be really careful that you don't scratch them unless you have a titanium coated mirror titanium coated mirrors are scratchless mirrors if you want to buy a titanium coated mirror please be prepared to shell out at least 14 to 20 thousand rupees for one mirror as compared to a stainless steel mirror the whole set in front of you at this point of time in your on your screen 
it has one, two, three, four, five, six mirrors. As you can see, the lowermost mirror, which is horizontal, is the occlusal mirror. It is called the size B mirror. The one on its left is a pediatric dentistry mirror. Again, this is also for occlusal shots only. The mirrors in the center on top, they are buckle mirrors. They are used for uh, taking pictures of probably you can say angles classification type of occlusion. Those kind of mirrors you can say when the patient is in maximum intercuspation position. You can use these mirrors for that. And the ones on the extreme corners, they are useful for quadrant wise taking images of the teeth. In fact, if you've done a cavity restoration and stuff like that, these mirrors on the extreme corners are very useful for them compared to occlusal mirrors because the patient feels least uncomfortable with them. Uh, the stainless steel mirrors are available with dental photography school. Uh, in fact, we have certified uh, photography mirrors for dentistry. The whole set in front of you right now is only for 5,000 rupees. So if you want, you can order them. You can email it to us that you want them. We'll deliver it at your doorstep. Uh, Dr. Kamlesh is asking, the image reflected from stainless steel mirrors seems to be slightly different. Is it, is it the same? Honestly speaking, Dr. Kamlesh have been doing or using stainless steel mirrors from the past five years. And uh, till date, nobody is able to point out if they are titanium mirrors or stainless steel mirrors. So it's never possible that the stainless steel mirrors give a different kind of an image. It has never happened to me. If it is happening to you, I would suggest that uh, you probably look into the matter with respect to the angle at which you are taking the image. I believe that it can be a flaw of the angle at which you are taking an image because of which there might be some kind of distortion. So please uh, look into the matter or if you are if you're not satisfied with the answer, probably you can email me a particular image in which you felt that the image is a little faulty. I'll try to look into the matter and get back to you. Yeah, so this is the kind of uh, mirror set that Dental Photography School has to offer to its delegates. If you want to place an order, most welcome. We'll be sending it across to you. The most important equipment for dental photography, I personally feel, is that uh, good retractors. You should always and always insist on good retraction techniques. And if you want good retraction, you should never buy the self-retracting ones, which are the U-shaped ones, which are uh, in which the left and the right sides are connected to each other. They are passive retractors. They will not uh, put a lot of force onto the cheeks. They are uncomfortable and to use also. And uh, sometimes they are not transparent. I always insist that my students or my delegates use these retractors, which are transparent and they can be held by the patient himself or herself. If the patient is not comfortable holding it, the assistants can hold it. The best part of it is that the angle uh, in which the retraction has to take place can be very well controlled by the cheek retractors. Uh, the assistant can control that for you. And the amount of force which is to be put for retracting the cheeks is can be very well controlled by these retractors, which is not possible with the self-retaining kind. Again, I would insist at this point of time that please do not use colored retractors because they are in fact a crime to be used. Uh, it is really wrong of any dentist if they have colored retractors like yellow, red, blue, violet and whatsoever. You get them all rainbow colors. Please stop using it. Always insist on transparent retractors. Preferably do not use metal retractors again because they reflect light back onto the lens. Because of this you might get a lens flare. This will be reflected onto your lens and this will compromise on your contrast. So please do not use metal retractors because they reflect back onto the lens. We do not want retractors which do this. I think I have almost reached the end of my presentation for today and you all are satisfied with the quality of content that I have put in today's webinar. If you have any comments on the same, you are free to email me. You are free to call me. Uh, I think I had given my number earlier. I will give my number again. My number is 992042037. This number is my personal number. If you want to contact me at any point of time, most welcome. Thank you, Dr. Abhiji. Dr. Abhiji is satisfied. It was sheer pleasure listening to you, Dr. Dinesh. Thank you so much. 
but before I conclude for the day, I would like to show a couple of images that are expected out of a dentist. Honestly speaking, and sadly, I do not even spare my pediatric dental patients of dental photography. Honestly speaking, I feel that they enjoy photography more than adult patients. So do not think of pediatric patients as difficult candidates for dental photography. It's definitely wrong. Honestly, uh, in the first appointment or in the second appointment, first appointment, I do not do anything in pediatric dentistry cases. My first appointment is always about building a rapport with the child. And my second appointment is probably about taking an x-ray or probably doing dental photography. They really enjoy dental photography. In my second appointment, I take extra pictures. And uh, in my third appointment, I take intraoral pictures. By the fourth appointment, the child is very comfortable and he sits on his own on my dental chair and he asks me, what are we going to do next today? What pictures are we going to clean? Dr. Uh, Darshana is asking me my number again. I repeat it for you. Double nine two zero four two zero three one seven. In fact, I have already written it in the chat window. If you can check it out, double nine two zero four two zero three one seven. This is my personal number. You can email me whatever you want. You can WhatsApp me anytime. I'll get back to you. Right. So these are the kind of images that you can expect with a dual point flash system. You can take these images by yourself once you have them. The trick is about uh, the trick is about using good diffusers, good bouncers, or good softboxes. Probably we can keep an email. Uh, probably we can keep a webinar on the use of bouncers and softboxes. Uh, Dr. Abhijit wants my email address. Just a minute. Here we DA. Uh, it is. I'll give my dental photography email. at the rate gmail.com uh, I, I have sent my email address on the chat window it is dental photography school at the rate gmail.com please, please feel free to share your comments these are the kind of images that you get with good dual point flash systems I have extensively researched on the use of soft boxes and diffusers and uh, such kind of soft reflects even in dental, uh, dental patients, uh, mind you, he is wearing an acrylic denture. Uh, even they are looking very beautiful. It is the it is the artwork with which it is the passion with which you want to take dental photography to the next level. You can take all these pictures at your end itself. Just think about buying the right camera equipment. If you have the right kind of equipment, sky is the limit for you. This was one of the images that got really popular on Facebook nowadays and even I personally love it just uh, see the amount of detailing in the gingiva the stippling is amazing They're almost like an orange peak and I love to see such images if you want to take such images do let me know if you would like to learn more about dental photography so thank you very much for being there and listening out to me I'm sure that uh, probably at some point of time you must have got bored, but it was my duty to let you know what kind of equipment is required in digital photography so that you don't have to spend seven years doing photography like I had to understand what kind of equipment is ideal for digital photography. I sincerely hope that you can start doing digital photography very well from today itself and keep it up and do dental photography daily in your dental practice. We assure you that we'll be keeping you updated about future events from the dental education. But to be on the safer side, we sincerely request you to subscribe to our newsletter on www.thedentaleducation.com. We keep on blogging about various topics. Uh, the topics are unlimited. We discuss about each and everything. There are free downloads on our website. You can check out our website. And if you are subscribed to our newsletter, you will be automatically informed about our future events and future blogs, future articles, everything. So thank you very much for joining me for today's webinar. And uh, I hope to see you all very soon. Thank you, Dr. Dinesh. Thank you, Dr. Abhijit. And uh, thank you, Dr. Snehal, Dr. Darshita, 
Dr. Dinesh, Dr. Kamlesh, and uh, we have one dentist also from South Africa, Dr. Nigoy. Thank you very much for joining me, and it was a pleasure to have you all. Thank you so much.